the post has arrived. I think I know what this is. We have got Lost Lanes North. 36 glorious bike rides in Northern England. So this is the latest in the series from Jack Thurston. Ooh, and a badge. Um, we've got a note here from Jack saying, don't judge my snaps too harshly. Oh. Unfortunately, this is a really terrible time to receive a travel book, which I can't use right now. Um, oh, how much I'm sure all of us would very much love to go on a long ride incorporating a load of lost lanes while the sun is shining like it is at the moment. But we're in lockdown, so maybe next year for lost lanes in the north. Luckily, I already had the idea of filming a lost lanes review, coincidentally, exactly one year ago today. But then I never had any time to finish it off or edit it into anything. So for now, here's a look at a lost lanes from the west with a few comments on the books along the way. And then I'll take a look at this one at the end of that. It is Sunday, the 21st of April. And I am in Dorchester. I've just been missing my mother here. But now I'm going to head out on a ride from Jack Thurston's book Lost Lanes, Lost Lanes the West edition. One of his set of books of interesting and scenic rides on quiet and forgotten country lanes. ridden any of Jack's routes before. I've had the books for a while. Today though I am going to ride Hardy's Hills in Dorset, in part because these are pretty much all lanes that I have ridden before. I grew up in Dorset, I've always had family out here so I've already ridden pretty much all of the lanes in Dorset. So this is something of a test to see what I think of Jack's routes. Hardy's Hills ride. We're heading out to Dorchester. On the little lane that just leads up to the car park at Maiden Castle. This big Iron Age hill fort. We're not going up there. Which is probably for the best. I've been up there enough times on school trips and since. In the rain and mud. You get all right views from the top, but really it looks much more spectacular from the air above it. You can't really see how amazing this set of earthworks is until you get above them. The route here just turns off down the little right away. about this. It's alright on a day like today. It's a little bit stony. I have been down here when it's very muddy. I can help with that but it would be nice if there was uh, more inclusive options available which I know around here there aren't really. Your only alternative is taking the B road for a big roundabout on the bypass. We get past an old burial mound on the right here.
now heading through Martinstown. Nothing much of interest to say about this village. Nothing. Like a lot of the villages in the chalk hills of Dorset, it's got a nice little, tiny little stream runs alongside the main street. And it's where I created my, by far the most viewed piece of content I've ever created. A little snap I took passing through, what would it be? 16 years ago? And which has now been stolen and appropriated everywhere. climb up to the summit of back down on the South Dorset Ridgeway. Starting to feel that it's quite a warm day. And at the top of the hill, overlooking the English Channel, and above the village where he was born, the memorial to Captain or Admiral Thomas Mastermain Hardy of Kiss Me Hardy fame. Nelson's captain. trust spot and car park which is responsible for the quite a lot of traffic you get up here. I mean, it's definitely the interesting route for the views and the climb. 
and the monument at the top. But it's not the quietest yet. I'm expecting we will get to that in just a moment. We're coming up to a little junction. If you go straight on here, then you drop into Abbotsbury. If you like the kind of little country villages that people can't avoid the word quaint when describing. It's got a nice little beach. We're not going that way though. It is a nice little lane down into the village down a very fun descent and then out to the beach but there's then no other way to continue your ride on from there except by taking the very busy coast road so we turn right onto again not the quietest of lanes here but we're only on this for a very short while and then we descend into the Valley of the Stones. nice quiet lanes through the valley so I'm just gonna plod along and enjoy them
taking just a little detour here. I don't think this is part of the route. I think the route turns off back there. But I'm going to drop in quickly to Battenborough Stock. It's got a nice beach at the end of Chesil Beach there. It's the far end of Chesil Beach. This 20 mile long, very impressive big shingle bank that runs the length of Dorset. Jurassic Coast and this end of it is the, the whole length of the beach it's very a wonderful natural bit of geology with the currents of the waves and the tides is that the shingle along the length of the beach gets graded So it's a continuum from very big pebbles at the east end down to pretty much sand to the west end under the sandstone cliffs here. The main reason really for the detour is that they have blues down there and Hopefully ice cream. like our lost lanes here we're also following National Cycle Network Route 2. I don't usually follow pre-planned routes at all and part of that is down to the fact that I've not really found any that I can trust especially not National Cycle Network ones ones that I can't trust to suddenly dump me onto either a very busy road or at the other end of the scale dump me on muddy tracks and scree slopes and with my limited experience of guidebooks, pre-planned tour routes so that uh, not everyone really puts the kind of effort into researching the routes that Jack clearly has I've seen a few shocking suggestions out there from People have clearly thrown together stocking filler books and not actually visited half the places they've put in there. And anyway, everyone has different goals from their travel. There's no real reason to expect an author or indeed a reviewer for that matter to share the same priorities as you. what a good tour should look like.
but yeah, when it comes to travel, when it comes to doing a tour, I tend to come up with my own routes. That said, not everyone has the luxury uh, time to spend designing their own routes, time to spend looking around, filling their Google Earth with notes, time to spend poring over ordnance survey maps. And that's going to be one audience for these kinds of books. If Jack's idea of what makes interesting places, interesting roads, interesting landscapes to ride through aligns with your own. Possibly in a much bigger audience is that Jack isn't really touting these as tour books at all. You're not really expected to buy the set and ride every one of the routes that are described. The idea behind these is that they're supposed to be inspiration for you to get out there and find your own lost lanes. Get on the bike, find out what you're comfortable with in terms of length and find out what you're interested in going to see, what lanes you want to ride on. Explore your own local areas. Something that to me feels like a very normal thing to do. I've always done it, which I know is not normal for a lot of people. Turned off NCN2 to start climbing, heading back into the chalk hills of the Dorset Downs now, climbing up Egerton, family favourite hill, another one with a Iron Age hill fort on the top. Well, you can really see from the top of Agadon is that we're right on the transition between landscapes here. 
Egerton is the last of the chalk hills, the great chalk formation of southern England. And these are the same hills that roll from here all the way up through the Dorset Downs, the Wiltshire Downs, Salisbury Plain, the Chiltern Hills and beyond. This is the chalk of the South Downs, the Isle of Wight, Beachy Head and Eastbourne and the White Cliffs of Dover. And these hills all join together but here at Egerton they give way. And you look out from here onto the landscape of the Marshwood Vale and West Dorset rolling into Devon. The limestones and sandstones. A very different kind of landscape to the classic English rolling hills of the chalk formation. But you can see out across the, the valleys, these fingers of valleys that reach up into the Dorset Downs. You can see across to Rampisham Down, the remaining last few wireless transmitters up there, where, as I understand it, the World Service used to broadcast from. It's always a big landmark growing up, the cluster of many paths transmitters up there. Now redundant and half gone. Lovely long slow descent into Dorchester on the old Roman road following the top of the chalk ridge here. A view back across the Winterbourne Valley back to back down and Hardy's Monument which this year seems to be a view filled with single-use plastic mulch by the looks of it. Might make for an interesting photo but um, yeah certainly changes the landscape a bit. then we're just going to have to leave the Roman road and pop over into the, I think it's the Froome Valley at this point, or maybe a neighbour of the Froome Valley. Because at this point the Roman road becomes the A35, the trunk road. 
not very much in the spirit of Lost Lanes. This is a lovely route and I can confirm that Jack has indeed picked some excellent Dorset lanes here and I can also confirm that there are a lot of other lovely lanes that aren't in the book and that's kind of the point not to be a comprehensive guide to all of the ones that are worth riding but just to provide an introduction to the joys of slow travel like this. So anyway, buy Jack's books. They're good. Buy them if you don't know where to start with plotting a day out and you want some pre-planned routes to follow. Buy them if you want to learn the art of planning your own routes. Buy them if you just want some inspiration to get out into the fresh air and explore your world. And frankly, buy them if you just want to browse through some really quite brilliant pictures the kind of photos that you only really get spending the day in slow travel for a place. So Jack asked me not to judge what he calls the snaps in these books, but I think I'm going to have to because his pictures are fantastic and they're part of what makes me need to complete the set when a new one of these books comes out. And they're excellent in terms of the technical quality and in composition. The books are full of these pictures with perfect leading lines that draw you into the scene, pictures that draw the eye through them. These pictures are full of depth, so if these really are just snaps then Jack is a natural in the walls of composition. The pictures are also full of mood. You can feel the warm evening sun and the damp morning air here. Distant waterfalls and the crunch of gravel under tyres, the things that put you in those places and in these moments. I think most importantly for a book like this, the pictures are full of stories and Jack knows how to employ technical and compositional techniques to tell these stories from incongruous juxtapositions of life passed on a ride to compressed depth of big landscapes in telephoto lens. I know some landscape and travel photographers who obsess over the hours around sunrise and sunset, who meticulously research where the dramatic scenes and honeypot locations are and they check 3D models of where the light shines at different times of the year I'll consult their weather forecasts and when the moment is perfect go out and drive to their spot, set up their equipment, calculate the perfect exposure and wait for the perfect moment, press the button, get back in their car, go home. And when you do this you get pictures that look amazing but which tell no story. Why collar here? I've done that ride I think after Claire Balding did it on the telly and I followed that on a very rainy day so the whole point of slow travel on a bicycle for me at least is that you get the story of the place. I think Jack himself said it somewhere here. On a bicycle you travel at the speed of the land, you don't just see and hear the world and the weather change around you but you smell it and feel it. 
physical effort heightens the senses and you feel everything with a greater clarity. And that's what Jack's pictures do. They tell of a day on a bike when a place reveals itself and you find yourself in serendipitous moments, more magical than any pre-planned photo shoot. And yeah, so now I really am yearning for a long ride in the north. Anyway, the point is, these books are great. If you haven't already, buy them. Even if you can't get out for a ride at the moment, they're hugely enjoyable just to flick through. Oh yeah, also, while you're at it, what are you supposed to do? Like and subscribe?